Prayer is a powerful method of communication. It's a powerful uh, part of our life. But prayer is not all about talking, us talking to God. It's also him speaking to us. And often we go into prayer thinking how, how to say what we need to say, which is good. But also we need to ask, how can I hear God's direction and guidance for me? When you and I hear the voice of God, his voice can change everything. It can change what we do or how we do it or understanding. His voice is words of hope, words of understanding, words of faith and courage. So many times we find ourselves dealing with things in life and we feel like we're by ourselves or that God's not with us, but we didn't take any time to hear from him, recognize what he's saying to us. In John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep Listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I want to tell you that sometimes uh, the symbolism of the word voice is missed on us. And many times in scripture, we miss the understanding of what God is saying or what Jesus is teaching because we get focused on a literal definition of a situation. For instance... Um, the Bible is a spiritual book written by the Holy Spirit to spiritual people. And there are uh, metaphors, there are parables, there are examples to us. So when Jesus talks about, you know, or we read about in the Bible about a wolf in sheep's clothing. So is he warning us about wolves that might be running the streets of Los Angeles? Or is there a spiritual meaning behind it? You know, I used to live up in an area where there are coyotes, but I don't think that's what Jesus was talking about. I think he was talking about spiritual people that might look one thing on the outside, but on the inside, there's something different. He told the disciples, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Do you think that they threw a net in and were hoping to pull up a human being or, you know, go, you know, like that? Or is it symbolic? Yeah, it's symbolic of of a, a greater message. And, um, So there are things like that in the scripture that confuse us, and um, it it might even just be with um, the idea of the voice that we're talking about. Um, I I thought about this thing this week where Jesus said that we would lay hands on the sick and they would recover and cast out demons, and then he says they would take up snakes, serpents, and they wouldn't hurt them. And so the misunderstanding of that has caused people to go to churches in the hills of Kentucky where they actually bring snakes to church. And uh, unfortunately, they need the laying hands on the sick because of it. Because that's not what he's talking about. It's not about snakes. He's talking about evil, that we have power over evil. And so then we talk about his voice. His voice is a message from God. It's his direction. It's impartation of information, ideas, direction. And it's not just a voice. You know, God could speak to us audibly, I guess. It's up to him to do that. But we, he speaks into our heart mostly. And sometimes we miss it. If you prayed for a sign, would you recognize it if he showed it to you? And so in the book of Revelation, verse, chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person. So this is a, a, a verse that's rich with spiritual insight. And so he says, I stand at the door and I knock. And what he says is, When anyone hears my knock? No, he says, when anyone hears my voice. But it didn't say he was talking, it said he was knocking. Because both of them are symbolic of when, if he's knocking, he's expressing, I'm pursuing you. I I want a relationship with you. I I want to help. I want in your life. And his voice, it's like if you hear his voice and you think, I recognize that he loves me. I recognize that he's, he wants me to trust him. 
So then if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, you know, we open it from the inside. Sometimes we're praying that God will break the door down. But the scripture says, God doesn't burst into our lives unwelcomed, uninvited. If you hear my voice and open the door, then I'll come in. And it says, I'll eat with him. To me, it shows a desire to connect, a desire to build a relationship and friendship. And so we're listening for that voice. And that's what we want to talk about today is hearing that voice. You know, um, I was uh, having a little bit of hearing loss in my ears, and so um, I, was, I got these little hearing aids that are kind of cool, sit back behind my ear. And when I had chemo treatment, the hearing doctor said, uh, sometimes after chemo, we see patients, their hearing goes down a little bit, so we got that. But when he was doing the test, he goes, okay, so here's the situation for you. The, when it's higher frequencies, you don't hear as well. For instance, female voices. I was like, oh man, that's it. I mean, Holly told me for years, you don't listen to me. I'm like, look like you're mumbling. Wait, I think the battery is not working here. I, So this is supposed to fix that. That's a whole other message. <laughs> but the point is, couldn't hear a higher frequency, and I think sometimes we're not in tune with God, so we're in some kind of relationship, but we're missing that connection. And so today, I wanna to talk to you about a couple of hearing aids to help us hear God's voice, and one of the hearing aids is expect to hear his voice. And even in the introduction, that's what I'm trying to do is build your desire, build the value, point out the significance of hearing from him. And we read throughout the scripture in the Old Testament how God wanted to um, speak to people. And we see how Jesus taught us uh, about standing at the door knocking or my sheep hear my voice. And he talked about when the Holy Spirit leaves, then, or when I will leave, the Holy Spirit will come and he will speak to you what the Father desires. And so we see that why would God, who wants to have a relationship with us so much that then he would set it up so that we couldn't hear from him? So he, we should expect to hear from him. Jesus came, died, rose again so that we could have that connection with him and so that he can speak into our life. And we have to be willing to accept his way of speaking to us. Like you might hear a story of someone else talking about what, how God led them and it might build faith and it might encourage you, but you have to be willing to let God speak to you. And like I said, God has spoken to people audibly, but I think primarily God speaks to our heart to the spirit of man inside our heart. So when we put faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes inside and lives in us. And that he speaks into our spirit. Because God is a spirit. And he speaks to us uh, that way. And so we, we listen. You know how the scripture said, Jesus said, uh, um, God is a spirit. And they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. So sometimes we find ourselves, we're listening for the voice of God. But really, we should be listening in here primarily for the voice of God. You know, the scripture even points out that there is, the enemy is called the prince of the power of the air. So we're listening out here when we should listen in that secret place in our heart. He's put his Holy Spirit. So the enemy can't hear that frequency. He doesn't know what God is telling us. He can fake it. He can try to do an impression of God. But God uses our thoughts and ideas to convey his voice. He uses opportunities and needs around us to express his message. God uses leadership to communicate his direction. He's speaking to us, but sometimes we don't hear because we miss the simplicity of his way. 
It's like naturally supernatural. And it should, we should become comfortable and familiar with hearing his voice. And so when I say accept his way of hearing, I'll just tell you uh, one of the primary ways that he speaks to us is through his word. I, I can't emphasize this enough. And it takes spiritual ears of us read, as we read his word to hear from him. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. That's, you know, God can speak to our life direction and correction and strength and guidance. And look what it says. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This says that the word of God, he's breathed on it so that we'll be thoroughly prepared. How many of you are servants of God? Not that many. Let me even, how many of you are servants of God and will say something about it? You know, yeah, okay. So if you are a servant of God, it says that you could be thoroughly equipped by how his voice speaks through his word. And so we, we think, oh, I would, I'm just not ready. If, if God could just speak more clearly to me, then I could be fully equipped. But we need to listen to his voice right here in his word. And then he speaks to us, as I said, through his spirit into our spirit. And um, 1 Corinthians 12, or 2, 10 says, These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. And so when we find ourselves in difficulties in life or times where we really need to hear from him, it's the spirit of God that searches all things and speaks into our spirit. The Bible teaches us about um, building up your spirit. So we build up our spirit in his word, in worship, in prayer. You know, the Bible talks about praying in the spirit or praying in tongues that builds up your spirit, man. And so sometimes that's what I'll do. I'll pray in the spirit so that I feel like my heart is being built up so I can hear better God's direction and leading for my life. And so we accept how he directs us through his word, by his spirit. And, um, you know, it's important because God is going to speak to us just like if, if we spoke to someone and gave them encouragement from the word and they say, wow, this is just what I needed to hear. I feel like God gave you that for me. So he's using our voice. Well, he also uses our thoughts. So he'll communicate information to our thoughts. And... Good thoughts are not bad. They're good thoughts, but not necessarily God's thoughts. So we want to build up our spirit so that we can tell and interpret if this is God speaking to me or me coming up with my own ideas. And that's part of the journey. That's why we are learning together. You know, sometimes you'll hear a Bible teacher, and he's teaching on some point. He said, I said to God, this God said, well, you need to go over there. And I said, well, why should I go over there? And he said to me, you should go there because I'm going to show you something. And I don't know that it's all like a dialogue like that. It's probably thoughts that God puts in someone's heart. Maybe that's the way they describe it. But sometimes we start thinking, oh, that's how I want God to speak to me. Just like we're walking down the street having a conversation. I think that that can happen, but we have to be willing to accept what we hear from him and act on it so we build that trust in the relationship with him. Does that make sense to somebody? Good, that makes sense to somebody. <laughs> you know, when, when you're tempted, the Holy Spirit can warn you. And, and actually, the Bible seems to say that when we're tempted, he is warning us. In fact, it says that he is showing us a way out. The only problem is when we're being tempted and we're right in the middle, we're probably more focused on the temptation than we are his voice. You know, it, it's so much easier to flee temptation if you see it coming down the street. But when you're right in the moment, like all around you, it's like, yeah, I prayed for a sign. Maybe that truck full of signs was, you know, an indication for me. And uh, I know when King David was up on the roof looking at Bathsheba, according to the Bible, God was showing him a way out, but his look at that voice was a lot bigger than, don't look, run. <laughs> but I know God is speaking to us if our heart is receptive. Sometimes 
God whispers to us. It's like a nudge. It's like a leading, an impression that we get. Some people call it that still, small voice. And that comes from the prophet Elijah. And in the Old Testament, prophets were the main way, apart from that written down scripture that God would speak to people. And so when they weren't allowed to get it wrong, because when a prophet said, thus saith the Lord, and it wasn't really the Lord, I mean, you know, they would get, they would stone them or, you know, I mean, it was just like not good. It's very different than New Testament prophesying where you're trying to encourage somebody and, and uh, lift them up and you might get a little bit of it wrong, but it's not, it's not the same thing. But Elijah heard from God clearly and he needed to hear in this situation. So in 1 Kings 19, God says, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. And that's the voice that Elijah heard that led him for the next part of his journey, what he needed to do. And so there's that still small voice that we need to get comfortable with and to understand. And sometimes God speaks to us through circumstances, through events. You know, the Bible teaches us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In Proverbs 3, it tells us that if uh, we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, then he will direct our path or he will direct our steps. And so sometimes it's, it's like, I'll tell you, the reason that I'm standing here today is because I acted on the opportunity and the needs in front of me. So I started going to church, and I said, what do you need? And they go, we need somebody to help us set up the church every Sunday morning, I take it down every Sunday after church, load it in the truck. So that's what I started doing. I was serving, volunteering, and I felt like this is what God wanted me to do. And so then it was, we need an usher, or we need somebody on our worship team, so I did that, or I, we need somebody to teach a small group, and I did that. And as I responded to opportunities and the needs of people, more was clearer to me, more got clearer. I understood where he was leading me. And during the time of serving, I developed uh, an awareness of people's needs, an awareness of the Holy Spirit. I was growing in my faith. And so it was God leading me through circumstances and opportunities. And it's not that I didn't have leadings of, by his, his quote-unquote voice, but much of it was through the need around me. And so that's a very powerful way to understand God's direction. So the second hearing aid I would tell you about is listen, accept, and act. It could really just be listen, but the definition of listen that I'm talking about is that you accept it, and that you act on it. Listening is so important. Proverbs 8, 32 and 33 says, Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. I hope that we have a new sense of a desire to hear from God. To say, you know, I... I can hear from God because it's part of his plan. And so I'm going to expect. It's not for people who are more spiritual than you. It's for all of us. So expect to hear. And so then you're listening. Actually listening. You know, um, we're listening in worship. Sometimes while we're worshiping, I look at the lyrics. I even copied um, during this service here. And I was looking at salvation's tide is rising. All your people seek your face like a river flowing to wash our sin and shame away. And I just thought about how, um, how much God wants to wash that sin, wash that shame from us and, so that we can have that relationship that he desires and how shame often is a problem that we deal with. But we can start to listen for his voice. Listen in this message. 
You know, I, I read a story about uh, President Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt. He was a president for uh, four terms, the longest presidency. In the fourth term, he, he died. And, uh, but he was complaining about these reception lines at the White House where people would come and long lines of people and diplomats and different things. And so he's shaking hands and he said, they never listened to me. It's like a waste of time. So there's like music and noise and clutter and he's talking and he said, nobody listened. So he tried this experiment. And so when people are coming through, then one day he started, he said, this morning I murdered my grandmother. And people would say, wonderful, good job, Mr. President. And keep doing what you're doing just to confirm that they're not really listening. And uh, so finally this one guy, the diplomat, the ambassador of Bolivia actually heard what he said. <laughs> And so he was kind of perplexed, but he looked around and goes, well, sir, I'm sure she deserved it. <laughs> but I wonder if it's not me and you that don't really listen because of the clutter and the noise and don't really know what God is saying to us. And so these, these aids of letting the word of God speak to us. You know, if you, if you have a plan where you're saying, well, I'm going to read through the book of James or the gospel of Mark, and I'll read a chapter a day, and that's good because you get information, you get knowledge, and the word of God has an impact. But also listen. Ask the Holy Spirit before you read, Lord, speak to me if there's something in your word that I need, need to hear so that as you read, you're listening. It's like inclining your ear. That's what it says in Proverbs one time, incline your ear. And that's an interesting phrase because it, it implies that you're saying, what? So when God is saying through, your, through his word, through worship, I'm knocking on the door. And he said, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then there's connection. There's that relationship. There's, there's the uh, ability for me to communicate to you and, and us to communicate to him, you see. And so we build these things in our hearts so that we can listen and we can act on it. James 1.22 says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Hebrews 3.15, today if you hear his voice and do not, do not harden your hearts. You know, there, there's, a, a, there's a, a strong implication to us to, to do what you've already heard. What has God told you that you're pretty sure that that was the direction for God, for you, even if it's just the written word. Maybe it's just scripture that you go, well, I know most Christians believe that, but I'll study that later. When you really look down into it, you don't really want to do that or you don't want to know too much about that because then you'll have to actually do it. But why would God speak more to us? I know he, he has grace and he has mercy, but if he tells us two or three things and we don't listen, do you think it's going to cause our ear to be more sensitive or him to be more expressive to us? There has to be a little bit of us accepting it and acting on it, saying, I really do want to hear from you. And, I, and if, uh, if you speak to me, I'm going to follow through. So don't let the result of not responding guide your life, but being one of those who's a, a responder. Don't let the negative voices. I think about this door, you know, we, we, that's one of the things that, that I didn't talk about was what is the symbolism of the door. The door is the thing that separates us from Jesus. It's the thing that keeps us from connecting with him. So the door could be our own ideas, our fears, our anxieties. Like in David's case, it could be lust. It could be greed for a business person. And so he's trying to knock on the door through that thing that's our idol. That's our pursuit. He's like, hey, I got a plan for you. I, I mean, I want to love you. If you'll hear my voice, I'm knocking on that thing that keeps you separate. If you'll open it and let me in. So what is the door for you? And when we will humble ourselves and, and open that door. You know, sometimes we, we may not open the door because... <laughs> We're, we're on the side. It's like, what if Jesus came to your apartment this afternoon? And it's like, I, I need to clean some things up before I open the door. Because I don't want Jesus coming in and seeing my place. You know, I've got to put away some of the bourbon, empty bourbon bottles, you know, or got to put these magazines. You know, I've got to 
brush this powder off the counter. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret. He knows what you're doing on the other side of the door, okay? I didn't know what you were doing on the other side of the door, but I did notice who laughed at this and who didn't. But, um, <laughs> but listen, you know what? What's going on behind the door is why he's coming. He's not going to go, oh, man, I didn't know you were doing this. Because sometimes people say, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready for that water baptism yet because i got to clean some things. That's the whole opposite. That's... He loves us just like we are. We need to get baptized so we can overcome things. We, we need to open that door so he can bring his strength into our life. Yeah. Yeah, don't, you don't have to be afraid. Maybe that's what the door is for you. It's just fear. But I'll tell you what. Um, I've learned how to shut out the voices that uh, interfere with God's voice. Because there are voices of fear. There's voices of anxiety. There are voices of pain. There's voices of lust or, or greed that we, we deal with in life. But the scripture is so powerful. i got to just tell you um, that sometimes I find myself praying, and I just pray out and declare God's word. And God's word is it's not only speaking to me, but it builds my faith. And it's almost like as I declare it, I'm in agreement with God, what he's declared i got a bunch of verses here, and I'll just show you. You can write some of these down if you want. But, but as you pray, this is what God says about you, and it's what God says to you. What is his voice saying about you? It says, I'm no longer a slave to sin. Romans 6, 6, we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin may be done away with, and we no longer should be slaves to sin. So you might feel like you've got an addiction, but you're not a slave to sin. You can overcome that. You're no longer a slave to sin. You know, it, it, it says about you that you have become the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. That's Jesus. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. We become the righteousness of God so that we have confidence to come before him. It's like, Lord, what am I going to do? I feel like you are separated. No, you are the righteousness of God. He's washed you clean. Live out of that revelation. He's trying to say, don't live like a loser. Live like you have the righteousness of God in your life. And then it says, I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms in Christ. No, it's not. I can't hear from God. I wish I had the capacity to hear his voice. You got it. You have already been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You just want to awaken that in the inside of you. I'm created to produce good works. Ephesians 2.10, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus. I don't think God wants to use me. Yes, he does. He created you to make a difference. You are called to be a difference maker in the world. You know, it says, in, it says, I have been chosen by God. I'm holy and beloved as God's chosen people, Colossians 3.12. You know, God's chosen you. He hasn't given up on you. He knew your weaknesses. He knew your failures. And he knows your strengths because he gave them to you. He knows the gifts that are in you. And so if you realize that you're created to do great things, it changes how you see yourself and how you make decisions. I have been chosen by God. It says, I have the peace of God that passes all understanding, Philippians 4, 7. God, if you'll please give me peace. He's given it to you, every spiritual blessing. I have the peace that passes all understanding. Now, Lord, help me to let that guide me and influence me rather than the problems I face. I have the greater one living in me. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world, 1 John 4, 4. I have received the power of the Holy Spirit to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to cast out demons, to speak in new tongues. I have the power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm me. This is what God is saying to you to give you courage. I have no lack. My God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory. I can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one with my shield of faith, Ephesians 6, 16. What am I going to do? The devil's attacking me all over the place. Yeah, we can overcome him 
we can defeat those fiery darts by that shield of faith that God's given us. And that shield of faith is what I'm doing right now. That we say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath, Deuteronomy 28, 13. I'm strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, Colossians 1, 11. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. You say, Philip, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm losing my mind. Good. He's got a new one for you. It's called a sound mind. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be overwhelmed. you got a sound mind. If you'll let God's Word speak into your life, it'll change who you are and how you live. Man, there's nothing like His voice. His voice is so powerful. One of the parts of the story of the crucifixion that we often look over is in the Gospel of John. John tells us when the soldiers came to arrest Him, and um, it says in John uh, chapter 18, that uh, Jesus realized that the soldiers were coming to arrest him. And and they said, he said, who are you looking for? Verse five, Jesus of the Nazarene, they replied, I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, who betrayed him, was with the soldiers. And in verse six, as Jesus said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. So, so, you know, God says, I am that I am. And Jesus declaring who he is goes, I am he. It was like the word of God went so powerful that they fell over. (laughs) Then they like get up. Okay, let's get our spears and arrest this guy. But God's word is so powerful. When we declare it, he's speaking to us. He's speaking to our situation. And we can can speak those words with authority because that's what he says about us, each and every one of us. The last thing I'll say to you is um, the third hearing aid is the first one is expect to hear. The second one is listen and act. And the third one is take time to interpret. Listen, allow yourself some time. You've lived years listening to your emotions and listening to friends and and negative voices and discouragement. So it takes a little time to renew your mind and to be able to identify his voice. So just remember, it's the enemy that tends to drive us and feel like we've got to make a decision right now. So I'm going to do this. God leads us. There's a gentleness to it. He's not bursting the door down. He's knocking. Sometimes I think... God, you know how dull I can be. You know how slow I am sometimes to recognize what you're trying to tell me. I'm pastoring this church, so if you could just make it clear to me, I'd appreciate it. I don't think God speaks in camouflage so that I would miss it, and then he would judge me for it. He knows. This is like, okay, it's going to take Philip three or four times, so... Let me just explain it this way and show it through that. And, and this starts to get into my heart. I'm like, oh, I see what God's trying to say. So you just got to take some time. Sometimes it's circumstances unfold. Sometimes it's us growing in our faith to be able to recognize what he is, is saying to us. You know, there's a story in John chapter 12 where it says that God spoke audibly out of the heavens. And look at what it says in John 12, 29. When the crowd heard the voice, some thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel spoke to him. Isn't that interesting? That we would love it if God would speak audibly, but when he did hear, most of the people thought it was thunder, and others thought it was an angel, and only a couple people realized it was God. And so there's the need to be able to interpret what God is saying So whether it's the voice in your heart or whether it's how you apply a scripture to your situation or if it's a prophetic word personally to you, you take some time. You allow some time. You know, um, there is a scriptural principle that is brought up throughout the scripture in a variety of different settings. And the principle is this. Let everything be established by two or three witnesses. So the witnesses is confirming elements. So if it's a trial and somebody's being accused in Deuteronomy, it's only established by two or three witnesses. And if there is a a problem, it's two or three witnesses. And and so he says in the scripture to us that this is a, a guiding principle. And so when you are trying to interpret the voice of the Lord, have someone in, in pastoral leadership 
give you some input. You know, ask them what they think before you decide. You know, get a confirming scripture and, and allow some time for God to bring clarity so that you have that confidence that I really believe that this is God's voice and you step out in it. This is so powerful for your life. And I hope that, that you heard something today that's for you, that you could take from here and say, this is going to help me hear his voice more clearly. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for everyone here in this room. And I thank you for those watching at Church Online. And God, I pray that your voice would be heard. That your voice would be heard in each person's life. And Lord, we repent for hearing from you and not responding. We, we repent from not opening the door when you're knocking. And so we say, Lord, if you'll speak to us, we'll hear, we'll, we'll listen, we'll respond. Guide us, Lord, by your spirit. Guide us by your word. Give us ears to hear. I'd like to take a minute in this moment of prayer and pray for one other group of people. For those of you that are here today and maybe you've never made a decision to make Jesus your savior. You've never made that personal decision. Sometimes people allow their upbringing. Maybe you've got friends or family that are Christian or religious or you've been to churches. Maybe you haven't. But actually, none of that matters. The question I'm asking you is, have you ever, as an individual, personally said, today, I'm putting my faith in Jesus? That's it. That is the decision. That, for you, is the door that Jesus is knocking on, saying, would you let me into your life? The greatest step you could take today, if you've never put your faith in Jesus, is to open the door of your life to him. And with everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed in this moment of prayer, I'm going to pray a prayer out loud, and I'm going to invite you. If you'd like to put your faith in him today for the first time, you could just pray this prayer quietly in your heart. God hears the prayers of your heart. This is a prayer that millions of people have prayed and begun a genuine, authentic faith in Christ. I invite you to pray quietly something like this. Father in heaven, God, I thank you for loving me and I thank you most of all for sending Jesus. I believe he's the son of God and I believe he died and rose again for me. And today I'm putting my faith in Jesus. I want to trust Jesus for my eternity, my heart, my life. So Lord, come in as I open the door of my life and I ask you to heal the hurts in my soul and wash me clean and cleanse me from failures and sin and fill me with your presence, with your love. Oh God, thank you.